familiar. A lack of offense, wasting another fine pitching performance at the corner of third and king. Now, San Francisco is looking for some of that road magic to bring the offense to life. Will tonight be the night that the Giants find their bats? Find out in game two of the series. Padres Giants next. A beautiful day in San Francisco and turning into a beautiful evening at the corner of 3rd and King Street's 24 Willie Mays Plaza. Giants Padres game two of a three game series. Hello everyone. I'm John Miller with Mike Kruko. Welcome to San Francisco Giants baseball. And what's going on here at home? The Giants have lost 10 of their last 11 home games. And one thing that remains the same in all of the losing here at home is a lack of offense. Now they've lost Aoki. The guy who's the igniter at the top of the lineup, that's not a good thing. Ishikawa has been brought back for the minor leagues. And tonight's lineup is extremely interesting, to say the least, Mike. Well, interesting because Bruce Bochy wanted to get as many hitters that were hot in the same lineup at the same time. So what he did is he put in Brandon Belt in left field, Buster Posey first base, Andrew Susak, he's, at, he's behind the plate. Matt Duffy has been elevated up in the third spot in the lineup. And I, th I think it, it, it's it's just a matter of, of the skipper trying to get hot bats in the lineup to try and figure out this this puzzle that has been AT&T Park. They haven't had problems scoring on the road. They're averaging over five runs a game. Here they're averaging under three runs a game. So uh, the skipper's a little perplexed. Hopefully tonight uh, this this latest addition of the Giants lineup can produce some runs. Now, Ryan Vogelsong on the mound tonight. Now, he was outstanding in his last start up in Seattle. And he probably needs to be outstanding again. The Giants need that kind of a performance. At the same time, Matt Cain and uh, Jake Peavy both with one more rehab start each. And then sometime next week, they'll be ready to go to be reactivated, it seems. And so um, perhaps an extra sense of urgency for somebody like Vogelsong to continue to be excellent. Well, I think that competition is such a great thing at this level. And uh, with the two additions of uh, coming into the rotation later on with the addition of PV and Matt Cain, uh, that has put pressure on the existing members of the rotation right now to keep performing at a high level. Now, Vogelsong's last outing in Seattle was performing at a high level, six and two-thirds strong, shutout baseball, three hits allowed. He was brilliant with the fastball tonight, and that'll be his key, watching how he can control the corners with the fastball. When he's on with the fastball, you'll see it thrown 70% of the time, and there's nobody better. And he'll be up against Ian Kennedy, the veteran, who's had a lot of success against the Giants. Stay tuned. We'll be taking you into the Comcast Sportsnet studios for more on tonight's game right after these messages.
AT&T Park. Tonight, they take on their division rivals again for game two of this three-game series against the San Diego Padres. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. Giants lost an extra inning heartbreaker last night, but despite the loss, Madison Bumgarner was brilliant. He is our Toyota by the numbers this evening as we take a look back. Toyota's 4th of July sales event going off with the biggest deals of summer. Right now, 0% financing on 13 popular Toyotas. Visit buyatoyota.com to see all the deals. Toyota, let's go places. Now, Madison Bumgarner, after that performance, joined some very good company. Check out the list that our guys put together of most strikeouts in a game by a left-handed pitcher. Pretty impressive names there. Check them out with 14. Set a career record last night. 14 Ks in a single game. Right, The San Francisco franchise record for most strikeouts in a game, 16. It is shared by Jason Schmidt and Christy Mathewson. All right, tonight, Ryan Vogelsong gets a crack at it. He will be on the hill for the Giants. We have lineups, first pitch, and John and Mike are calling the game. Game two coming up shortly. Stay with us. Brought to you by your Northern California Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Kemp in the leadoff spot, right field. Solarte at second, Alonso at first. Justin Upton hitting cleanup in left. Norris, the catcher, Venable, center field. Middlebrooks at third. Amaris to the shortstop hitting eighth. Kennedy, the pitcher. Up against the Giants' right hander, Ryan Vogelsong, who's ready to go. Yeah, he's been in a very good groove with the fastball. And right on cue, first pitch of the game, a fastball right down the throat to Matt Kemp. Take a look at what Vogelsong has done. Five and five with a 4-3 ADRA, 55 strikeouts in 74 innings. His last outing, three hits allowed in six two-thirds shutout innings in Seattle. A lot of fastballs on the corner. And when he's right, you're going to see that type of command. He will cut and sink the fastball. He's got a curveball, a slider, and a changeup. Lifetime against these Padres, five and six with a 5-1-4 ERA.
One ball, one strike. Still looking in at Susak. Three infielders move to the left side of second in the overshift against Kemp. And the count goes to two and one. And you see how they're playing it. Field covered in the late afternoon, early evening shadows, except for that little triangular slice in right center near the 421 marker. And the sun shining brightly on that hitter's backdrop. And it's two and two, a 92 mile an hour fastball. Well, that's about what he's going to average with his velocity. But it's what he does with that that velocity with the different types of movement, the two and the four seam fastball, and his ability to control the corners. That's the key. Not an easy strike zone to throw to tonight. Jim Reynolds, the plate umpire, has a tight zone. Two and two pitch. Struck it out. Take a look at the defense the Giants will use tonight behind Bogosov, starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Belt, Pagan, and Blanco. Crawford Duffy on the left side of the infield, Panic and Posey on the right side. Andrew Susak, he'll be in the squad, put down the sides. Travis Ishikawa brought back for the minor leagues today, but the Giants are is talking to Tim Hudson. To his left, Ishikawa had been with the Sacramento River Cats, of course, the hero. Of the league championship series, his home run won the pennant for the Giants. It was the pennant winning moment. He had his Bobby Thompson moment. And it will forever be a part of the long storied history of the Giants. Only he had Bobby Thompson and the Giants who have done that hit a home run to win the pennant. And Chicago will be used at first base, left field, but also a lot as a left handed pinch hitter. And he Excelled in that role with the Giants last year. Long run for Crawford, and he gets there with Duffy alongside. So Larte is out number two. Vongo song gets a couple of quick outs, and here is Yonder Alonso. Alonso, who's hitting 321 and has a 412 on base percentage, but only two home runs. He's in the third spot tonight. Very rare for Matt Kemp to be hitting leadoff as well. But Kemp is another guy. He's been driving in a lot of runs, but with only four home runs. Two down, nobody on. The curveball. And there is Belt. Now in, and he can't get there. He started to his left, and that one had a lot of sinking action to it. And he could not react in time. It's a base hit. Of all the, the times that Bell has been out there in left field, he, he hasn't had many moments where you, you think it's an infielder playing the outfield. And this is one of them right here. Just not a good read. And you, you, know, you really have to feel that he's a bit disadvantaged because he hasn't had that many reps seeing balls come off the bat. And that one there, he broke back on the ball. And once he did, he had no chance to recover. So Belt in left field with Posey at first base is. You mentioned at the top of the telecast, Mike. Bruce Bochy just trying to get as much offense as he can in there. As Justin Upton takes a called strike. 270 average, 353 on base. And he's hit 13 home runs. Upton, 7 for 25. No homers in his career against Vogelsong. One ball, one strike. The umpiring alignment. But Jim Reynolds back at the plate. Manny Gonzalez at first. Paul Schreiber at second. The crew chief, Field and Culbreth, he is umpiring at third. The Padres have Jose Valentin coaching over at first base, and Glenn Hoffman is the third base coach for the new manager, Pat Murphy. Been about a week and a half now since they fired Buddy Black as the manager. Back into deep right. Blanco. He's got it. Right just as he got to the sunshine. Battling the fierce glare of the sun at the last minute as he had to navigate around that big wall. There's nothing easy about this play, and you can see the look in his face.
truth in engineering. Pagan, center field. Panic at second base. Duffy up in the third spot, hitting third and playing at third as well. Posey at first base, and he's done well against Ian Kennedy over the years, a 405 batting average. Belt left field. Crawford at shortstop. Susak catching, hitting seven. Blanco in right, and Vogelsong the pitcher. On the hill tonight for the Padres will be the veteran Ian Kennedy. Kennedy, a six year veteran, he's 30 years old, six feet tall, 200 pounder. And for Kennedy, when you take your bats against him, you're going to see a fastball that'll go low to mid 90s. He's got a curveball slider changeup. He'll throw anything at any time. Exceptional command. Lifetime against the Giants 10 and 4 with a 2.42 ERA. He has really had good success against San Francisco. One ball and no strikes. 272 average, only a 304 on base percentage. And uh, Pagan, who went through a real dry spell for two and a half, three weeks. And he's shown some signs of getting it going. Last night he had a hit his first time, but that was all. He went one for five. And that's back into the second deck. And a fan made the catch. Brought his glove, stood up, made the catch. Give me some. All right, let's take a look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, the guy in front of him was the perfect guy to have in front of him. He just ducked out of the way. Yeah, played perfect. One and two the count. And the curveball misses. Two and two to Pagan. The guy with the hat and the badges. He just ducked out of his way. That was good. Well, he didn't bring his glove. So maybe the guy behind, maybe the guy behind also, maybe he called for it. Pagan slaps it foul right past Roberto Kelly, the third base coach. Two and two. Joe Panic is on deck. Both pitchers, Kennedy and Vogelsong, in tonight's ball game, will pitch a lot with fastballs, and they'll pound the corners. And a curve in the dirt. One away. Let's take a look at the defense playing for the Padres tonight behind Ian Kennedy. Starting in the outfield from left to right, it'll be Upton, Venable, and Kim. Good arms across the board. And Maurice Dan Middlebrooks on the left side of the infield. Solarte and Alonso on the right side. Derek Norris, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. And some late arrivers. A regular part of the Bay Tour is to uh, sail on into McCovey Cove or motor in, as the case may be. All in one, the captain Joe Panic. It is very cool to do it, especially when the game is going on. No score, last of the first, one out, nobody on. Back to the screen. Now, Kennedy does not walk many people. However, he has given up a, a lot of home runs. He's averaged two home runs allowed per nine innings, which is a very big total. That's a lot. That's about twice as many as as Norm. If you're averaging one per ten inning, that's that's all right. That's acceptable. So right tank. And that's all for panic. Two down. Packers have a few of their starting pitchers who've given up a lot of home runs. James Shields has given up about one homer every five and two thirds innings. And Andrew Kashner, one homer about every six and two thirds innings. And remember, they their home game is still not a home run heaven, Petco Park, even though they brought the fences in a little bit. On one, the count to Matt Duffy. 289 overall average and a 338 on base percentage. Posey out on deck. Right there in the corner. Now it's 0 and 2.
Ian Kennedy for the year four wins five losses but a 5.43 ERA and it's one or two slider in the dirt just let the movement fall off the plate I don't think that Kennedy really is that comfortable throwing to Duffy I mean the league knows this guy's got a pretty good idea in that batter's box but for a control specialist like Kennedy he's feeling him out right now Off the outside, two and two. Good takes. It's exactly where he wants to throw those breaking balls. Let the movement start in the corner. Let the movement break out of the strike zone, off the plate away. You're hoping a guy chases us. Full count, three and two. Kind of a wrap around the outside corner with two seam movement that comes back into the right handed hitter. Kennedy has a scout report, but it's not to his style of pitching. And he's not going to trust it until he figures them out. There is Kemp. That ball was hit hard by Duffy. Giants down in order. On to the second inning. No score. Is the right choice for California. Ryan Vogelsong's last out against Seattle. Six and two thirds strong. Three hits allowed, no runs, a couple of walks, six strikeouts, and 102 pitches. And the Giants would win that ball game. And that is our fourth right choice. Well, the Giants needed that win to get the split before they moved on to Dodger Stadium. And Vogelsong was exceptionally good here. Is Derek Norris and the count is on one. Norris has been an excellent RBI man for the Padres so far. 41 batted in. One ball, one strike. Cutter off the plate. The Dodgers playing in Chicago and the Cubs beat the Dodgers in consecutive games Monday night they beat Kershaw and then they won in extra innings last night a game started by Grenke and the curveball it's one and two and tonight the Dodgers in game three of that series have a four to two lead last of the seventh at Wrigley Field there it is on the hand operated out of town scoreboard Colorado leading Arizona three to one top of the fourth in Denver. And the curve is outside. Two and two the count to Norris, the former Oakland catcher. It's funny, last year he got a lot of notoriety that he probably didn't want because he just 
hardly ever threw out a anybody trying to steal a base when he was behind the plate and that changed big time early on this year he was at the top of the the board in terms of showing out would be base dealers and now he is down on strikes one away and let's go down to Amy G. All right, John, as you mentioned earlier, Travis Ishikawa back with the club. He was the corresponding roster move to the Giants needing to put Nori Aoki on the disabled list with a fractured fibula. Aoki is in a boot. He is out at least a few weeks with that injury. Also, Sergio Romo, an update on him. He hyperextended that knee in last night's game. Last night listed as day to day, but today I spoke with him. He said he's doing fine. He threw off a mound. He tweaks that knee often. Unfortunately, last night it happened multiple times, which is why he came out. The Giants being cautious with him. He is available tonight should Boach need him. Gentlemen. All right. Thanks for the uh, update to Amy G. And the Giants are going to have to figure out how to do without both Aoki and Hunter Pence now. And Bruce Boach, did talk about before the game the fact that those are both high energy kind of guys who bring speed to the lineup, guys who kind of make things happen. Giants overloaded on the right side. Joe Panic. Handled it and Venable is retired. And that is out number two. The injury report brought to you by 1 800 4 injury. If you've been injured in an accident, call 1 800 4 injury or go to 1 800 4 injury.com. Aoki, just as Amy G said, on the 15 day DL with a fractured right fibula, got hit by a pitch by the hard throwing right hander Frias of the Dodgers in Saturday's game. He was hitting 317 with a 383 on base percentage and fourth in the National League All-Star voting for outfielders as Middlebrooks hits one just out of the reach. A panic for a base hit. Two out single for Will Middlebrooks here in the second inning. I was asked several times about uh, Aoki being hit as to whether or not I thought it was intentional. And it, it was not. It was not intentional. Here's the tweak last night. On the front leg of Sergio Roma, he'll plant that that plant stride step, and every once in a while it'll hyperextend. And as John pointed out, it happened a couple times in last night's ball game when uh, it became an issue. He left the ball game. I think you're very cautious about it. I think it had been September or October. I don't think he would have left the game, but uh, as John said, he's good to go tonight. Here is Amarista, and that's back out of play. 0-1. No score in the game. We're in the second inning. Tomorrow a day game. Don't forget tomorrow. There, it, it may show on your schedule or your even a ticket for tomorrow. A 7:15 start. That is not correct. It is a 12:45 start tomorrow. Day game tomorrow. So don't say, hey, let's get there early. Six o'clock. Don't. Do it. No. That will be late. It will be way too late. Get there early, but get there by maybe noon. Pagan. And the inning is over. One hit, one left. It'll be Posey, Belt, and then Crawford coming up for the Giants.
driving machine at BayAreaBMW.com. May 6, 2015, Giants taking on the Padres, and that's when Brandon Belt hit a double and a triple, and he hit those off of Ian Kennedy. So on that particular day, he had some serious ownage on Ian Kennedy, and that's our BMW drive. Belt on deck as we start the Giants half of the second inning tonight against the very same Ian Kennedy. And he's had some success, not just in that game against Kennedy, as you can see by those numbers. Buster Posey, who's also had some success against Kennedy. Ball one. 287 average for Buster, 10 homers, 41 driven in, and a 367 on base average. 2 0. Oh. Away, away, away. We continue to see teams. Stay in that outside corner consistently with hard stuff with Posey. Called a strike at the knees, and it's two and one. You know, it, it's pretty amazing. Posey's hit two and seven, ten home runs, and forty-one RBIs, and he hasn't really locked in to a hot streak like we've seen him have. And it's usually in the second half of the season we see him have it. He chased sharp breaking ball down and two and two. And I think it's a sign of a good hitter who can still be productive when he isn't completely mechanically locked in. There's a lot of hits with his head. Very smart hitter. And protecting with two strikes. That ball went out of play off to the right. Two and two. Buster took an 0 for 4 with a walk last night. Solarte. That's a nice play by the Padres second baseman to get Buster Posey. Uh, and I think Kennedy deliberately let this ball get by him. For fear that he may deflect it. The Martin Reynolds pull up the glove back. And Solarte initially did not have a great grip on the ball when he was making the exchange glove hand to bare hand. But he knew he didn't have a lot of speed coming down the line and allowed him the extra opportunity and made it good. Nice play. And you can see it, that little extra beat when he tried to get a better grip. And a nice throw. There's a call strike to Brandon Belt. Belt has been struggling, not just here at home, but just recently. And that curveball right into the defense. They had three infielders on the right side. And Amaris to the shortstop throws him out. Fans MLB.tv premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. You can see every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real time highlights. Live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. Every night on every device, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Thank you for your attention. Very attentive crowd. It really was. <laughs> Thank you so much. Go ahead and watch the game now. That one in the left center field. And hit it well, but not quite well enough. As Venable takes it out near the 382 marker. Giants down. In order, onto the third.
gutsy play. Last night, Angel Pagan diving catch at the top of the sixth inning. It was the first out of the inning. Will Venable hit the ball. Look at the knee jam into the ground, and it really jarred Pagan. It took a little while to rub that off, but it was a Ram gutsy play. Ram 1500 is Green Journal's 2015 Green Truck of the Year. Guts Glory Ram. Visit RamTrucks.com to learn more. Ryan Vogel song to his opposite number, Ian Kennedy, and it's strike one. Kennedy, the Padre pitcher, one hit, 16 at bats this year. And he struck out nine of those 16 at bats. A mighty cut. It's 0 2. Yeah, he moves the wood a little bit. He's a threat. He's got one hit. One ball, two strikes. Still trying to find that release point with the curveball. He's not yet his good buddy. And curveballs can, they can be that way. They can be very temperamental. But you have to keep going back to him during the course of the ball game because you never know when you might find it. Ooh, that is strike three call. That was a good one. And I like that call, too, from Andrew Susak. Guy's trying to find the release on a curveball. Have to throw it a couple times. Especially when you have a pitcher up there. Yep. Captain's there. So, is this a movie? Is that the, the newest Pirates of the Caribbean movie? Well, either that or it's a rum commercial. <laughs> Captain Morgan. Here is Matt Kent, the leadoff man. Curveball. Backhanded by Duffy. Scooped out by Posey. Two down. Nice play. Every day we see Matt Duffy at third base, he looks more and more comfortable. He's getting used to the speed that the balls come his way. His rhythm's improving, his footwork is improving. He knew he had plenty of time, even with the speed of Kemp. It looked like he was busting it too hard. This is the first time that Kemp's hit leadoff since 2010. Duffy straightens up and realizes, I don't have to hurry this play. Nicely done. Well, Kemp, who's had success in the past against Vogelsong, but he's not hitting home runs. And that's a big part of the value of Matt Kemp is the long ball. So, Pat Murphy, the new manager of the ball club. Trying to look for maybe a little different combination. Because Kent's been hitting cleanup a lot. He's been hitting in the home run kind of spots in the order. Always has. Or at least in the last several years. Solarte and Joe Panic into the outfield to get it. That's the inning. A seven-pitch inning for Vogelsong. So he's looking excellent tonight. Again, Susak, Blanco, and Vogel coming up.
My sales event is going off with the biggest deals of the summer. Right now, get 0% financing on 13 popular Toyotas. Visit buyatoyota.com to see all the deals. Toyota, let's go places. Let's go across McCovey Cove and back inside AT&T Park. No score in the game. Last of the third. First ball swinging. Off the glove and over the hand. The glove of Middlebrooks in the hand of Amarista. And somehow that found its way into left field for Andrew Susan. I got to believe that's a base hit right there. I mean, he smokes his ball. Ball comes up on Middlebrooks. Hits him high in the thumb of the glove. Marista tried to back him up. I think even if Andrew Marista makes a play, he's not going to get Susak. But indeed, they ruled an, an, an error. Well, even in the slow motion, you could see Middlebrook's gloves start to rise up, realizing at the last moment that it had taken a bad hop. Well, let's put it this way. Had there been a hit prior to that? Ah. But the, they haven't had a hit yet against Kennedy. The first one's got to be clean. I mean, that's kind of the unwritten rule. I can't say that I disagree with that. Yeah. Okay. Well... If I'm the official scorer, that would be a rule of thumb that I would follow. I agree. All to the count to Gregor Blanco. And we saw it in Seattle when uh, Asa Bumgarner made his start two starts ago. And he had a no hitter. And the first hit was not a clean hit. But it was a ball that came up on. Brandon Crawford. I mean, it was a bad hop. It really was not fair to penalize an, an infield on a bad hop. That ball is smoked in the right field and over the head of Matt Kemp. And the Blanco only gets a single with Susak going around to third, and that is a a very clean hit without question. Uh, nothing's more beautiful than a backspin line drive and he catches this curveball. It's absolutely flush the bottom half of the ball and This thing takes out and a drive line drive with backspin like any ball backspin You'll get carry And Kip saw this thing and he just turned around and started running to the wall. He knew he had no chance for it But Susan had to make sure it was going to get caught and I think had he have identified it earlier You might have seen Blanco take second First and third, nobody out. Giants get their first two base runners of the game here in this inning. Now Vogelsong. Middle infield, double play, Dad. Vogelsong shows bunt. And that's ball one. So Vogelsong bunting, in essence, here to get Blanco over to second base. And he looks at Roberto Kelly. There was no move by Susak whatsoever toward the plate as that pitch was thrown. Middlebrook, shallow at third. Alonso, the first baseman, on the bag with Blanco. Pushed, and it's foul. One ball, one strike to Vogelsong, who's had three sacrifice bunts. He is tied for the leadership among all the Giants pitchers with uh, Chris Heston for most successfully executed sacrifice bunts this year. Overall hitting 130, 3 for 23. No score in the third. The Giants threatening to jump ahead here. Vogelsong squares. And it goes to 2 and 1. And again, Vogelsong with a look at third base coach Roberto Kelly. And Kelly walks over to. The vicinity of Susak to whisper in his ear. Two and one the count. You've got to come off the bag too if you're that runner third. If that ball gets by a pitcher or by a first baseman, you can score. The bunt right out in front. And juggled. And the only out Norris gets is at first base. And so Blanco has been moved up. I think he wanted to go to second and he looked over to see where Susak was and then lost the ball. Yeah, he took his eye off it. Well, Sunday, June 28th is Hello Kitty Day at AT&T Park. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Hello Kitty Giants bobblehead. 
The fans who purchase a Hello Kitty Day special event package will receive a collector's edition Hello Kitty Giants Gnome. Reminder, you want to get the Hello Kitty Giants Gnome, you need to purchase a special event ticket. To do that, go to sfgiants.com slash special events. I've been working on my Hello Kitty because I think I, I don't quite have it down yet. Yeah. Hello Kitty. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah, you need some more work, John. <laughs> You don't think that's it? <laughs> Hello, Kitty. Yeah, that's the one. And it's ball one to Pagan. Runners at second and third. One out for the Giants. The middle infielders are backed up. So ground ball to toward the middle of the diamond could get a run home. A fly ball struck well enough would likely get Susak home. Doesn't have to be a base hit to put the Giants ahead. And the changeup is off the outside. Two and on. And he's wanting that pitch. He did. He looked a little frustrated. He took that throw back, didn't he? Jim Reynolds could be tight. I mean, I don't think his corners are, are as big as other umpires. He will, however, give high strikes. Pagan struck out his first time. Two balls, no strikes. The count. Runners at second and third. Three and nine. Kennedy's thinking, what do I have to do? And there's that little frustration that you really have to suppress. You can get angry at a pitch you think should be a, a, a strike. But you have to wipe it clean. Otherwise, it'll mount up on you. And pretty soon you're competing against the umpire, not the guy in the batter's box. And it's a four-pitch walk to Pagan. The bases are loaded. Joe Panic strides to the plate. By the way, the uh, the pitch FX on the MLB at bat app tied into the the computerized uh, cameras that they have in every ballpark now uh, showed that second pitch. The first one he really was unhappy with the outside pitch as being about two three inches off the outside, but the next one showed it as a high strike on the corner from the windup back to the screen. Strike one. He was looking for a fastball up and out over the plate. I mean, it is a fly ball situation. And you're going to have to get some pretty good depth on it with the arms that the Padres have in their outfield. You don't have great speed at third base with Andrew Susak. Padres with the middle infield double play depth. A ball and a strike. One thing you do not want to see from these outfielders is momentum coming into a fly ball. You want to see them catch a ball either going back on it or flat footed. Panic has had a very difficult time against Kennedy. That ball is hit well. And I think perhaps well enough for Susak to score. And Kemp will not make a play on him. And the Giants have a one nothing lead. Really a, a beautiful situational at bat. One one count, got a ball up. And I think he does it as well as anybody in that Giants lineup. And he really reminds me a, a lot of Bill Russell, who used to be a shortstop with the Padres. He was very, very tough in situational at bats. And I think Joe Panic is the same cut. Bill Russell had a very long career for the Dodgers. When you look at his numbers, and Russell didn't have great numbers. I mean, if you compare another short size, but you give him a situational at bat, I thought he was the toughest guy in that entire Dodger lineup back in the 70s and 80s. And Joe Panic really reminds me of the way that he approached his at bats. So you mean runner at third, less than two down, getting the guy home? Exactly. Runner at second, nobody out. Get him over. You know, avoid the strikeout in situations where you need to put the ball in play. I mean, he was just tough. Could bunt the ball, push bunt, drag bunt. Hit and run man. Not afraid to hit with two strikes. And those are all things that Joe Panic does well. Matt Duffy with Blanco a fast runner at second. Pagan a fast runner at first. And now it's a ball and a strike. Duffy hit a line drive to the right fielder for an out his first time. Hit it hard. But to Matt Kemp and Duffy, who with Runners in scoring position and two down is hitting 375 this year. He's got a runner out there right now in scoring position. 
He lays off that 77 mile an hour breaking ball, two and one. Good speed on the base paths. Right now, if you find a ball in the gap, with two outs, good chance you can score two here. It's a pitch and boy playing boy defense on the right side. They've got Venable, the center fielder, and he's about eight to ten steps out of straightaway center towards the right center field gap. And they move Kemp over towards the lines right. And there you see nothing but stuff on the outside corner. But they know that Guffey will go that way. So they know that's his tendency, so they simply stack the defense up in the outfield on that right side. You saw Buster Posey on deck. Two down, three and one the count. Oh, he blew a fastball by him. Wow. Three and two. Foul tipped, according to the plate umpire Reynolds. Good balance in that swing, though. His lower body was not fooled. Duffy, whether they're two outs or not, hitting 345 for the year with runners in scoring position overall. Runners go. And it's fouled and out of play. So they go back and we'll try it again. Three and two with two down. Blanco at second, Pagan at first. A run in, the Giants ahead, one nothing. The other thing that Duffy's done well against this year is or hitting against right handed pitchers is what he's done well. 326. The spin move. Well, that's the time to do it. Three and two, two outs. It's a running situation for your base runners. I mean, they're going to be off and running. As soon as this ball leaves Kennedy's hands, they're going to start running. And that's the time to do that spin move if you're a pitcher. There they go. And it's ball four. And the bases are loaded for Buster Posey. And that's a great at bat. And what does Bruce Posey always say? The key to offensive success is keep the line moving. And a two out walk that allows your cleanup hitter to hit with the bases loaded. That's a great at bat. So Ballsley, the Padres pitching coach, out to the mound. And it's been a an arduous inning for Ian Kennedy. He's thrown 22 pitches in the inning. And the Giants are still up there. The seventh batter of the inning to come up Buster Posey now. And that's all that meeting was about just to give a bit of a breather. 46 pitches into it. But a lot of stress throws this inning. Buster grounded out to second his first time. Came into the game hitting 405 lifetime against Kennedy. Ball one. Starting with that change up, running down and in. And we're seeing a lot of first pitch off speed stuff and a lot of corner pitches now with him with, with Posey because he's had such success on the first pitch this first half. Off the outside. Two and out. Pitchers have reacted to it. They, they start to nibble now. If you know a guy's a first pitch hitter, it doesn't mean don't throw him a fastball. Or just don't throw him a strike. Just throw him something to, to your location. Let him get himself out. Two and one. Buster, you saw the numbers. The numbers are not very good with the bases loaded, surprisingly. As good a hitter as he is. But he hit his third grand slam just the other day. Back to the screen. And Buster, he's talking to himself out there. Well, I missed the fastball he was looking for. And good hitters, when they set up and they look a location and they look at a pitch and they miss it, especially on a fastball, that does frustrate them because they don't think they should ever miss one. And that one was right out over the heart of the plate. Two and two the count. There's a long drive. Deep left center at the wall. A grand slam. Another grand slam for Buster Posey.
his second Grand Slam in his last five games. And the second time he's done it in a two strike count. And that tells you all you need to know about this guy in his swing. And that even in a two strike count, he's a threat to take it deep. And that's what pure power hitters are. Brandon Bell now. On one. And there's the mistake, the location. Comes right back middle in mid thigh. It's just a that's that's T ball. And he's not going to miss that one. Oh, and two to bound. Take a look at the flight. Our splash cam. And that was up there. Now a third of the way up the bleachers. Adjusted. Plenty of room to spare. One and two. That was the 30th pitch thrown in this inning by Ian Kennedy. Two and two now to Brandon Belt, who grounded out to short his first, or he grounded out to the shortstop, who happened to be playing second base at the time. They got the overshift on. The second baseman's out in right field. The shortstop is at second base. The third baseman is at short. Full count from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2, just like that. Second grand slam for Buster Posey in five games. He hit one just this past Friday at Dodger Stadium. High and foul off the left field line and back out of play. Mr. Posey talking to Eli Whiteside, former teammate Eli Whiteside now. A uh, bullpen catcher for the Giants. At the knees, strike three call. Eight men come to the plate for the Giants in the third inning. And five of them score four on this swing by Buster Posey. They're just some of the dreamers and disruptors of Silicon Valley. Don't miss a new documentary with untold stories about how the Bay Area became the center of the information age. That's Saturday night at 7 right here on NBC Bay Area. Buster Posey as a first baseman. I, I noticed that coming into this game, his batting average this year as a first baseman, 315. This year he's hitting 500 with the bases loaded, including two grand slams. It's a big inning right here for 
Ryan Vogel saw a, a shutdown opportunity. And he's going to face the heart of the beast, the three, four, five hitters. Two and oh to Alonso. Alonso got a base hit his first time, although it was a ball that uh, Brandon Belt misjudged in left field. Well, that's kind of a Warriors Oreo cookie right there, I would say. <laughs> I've seen a lot of those uh, shirts around town lately. As well you should. Two and one the count to Alonso with Justin Upton on deck. The three, four, five spots in the Padres batting order. The Giants with five runs on the board. In the third inning. It's three and one to Alonso. And the one thing you do not ever want to do your team puts up a crooked number in that scoreboard. You do not want to start that next inning out with a walk. Out of play off to the left and it's three and two. And Vogelsong went right at him with a three one fastball challenge as he should. I mean, you do remind yourself when you're out there that a successful hitter is successful three out of ten times. Seven times he's going to fail. And you have to just keep reminding yourself that you have to put the pressure on that hitter. And that means throw strikes, especially with a, with a five run lead. Well, there you walked him. And the Lotso will go to first and we'll go to Amy G. All right, guys, Buster has good karma earlier today. He, along with the Giants Community Fund, hosted about 1,000, a little bit more junior Giants. They got here early. They got to have a Q&A with Buster, our own Dwayne Kuyper, emceed it. And Buster gave all of those kids a brand new glove and tickets to tonight's game. Now, here's the catch. One of the questions to Buster Posey today from a little kid, Buster, how do you hit Grand Slam so good? Buster laughed. He said, actually, I wish I hit them better. Then went on to say the point when the bases are loaded, if you can, is to keep things simple. Don't stray from your approach. We have a junior giant prophet in the stance, John and Mike. All right. Well, that's very timely. Amy G, thanks very much. Seeing as I just hit a Grand Slam. Well, and I think that young junior giant is going to think that he was indeed responsible for it. <laughs> Let's go. On. Next time you come and you have a chance to ask a question to Buster, ask him that question. Justin Upton. And it's 0 1. At the low strike there. That was generous. Upton just clobbered one to right field. That got caught right in front of the wall by Gregor Blanco. Really just an. An exceptional play. At the time, he was battling a uh, real fierce glare from the sun when he caught it. That's fair. Pass third and down the line. Belt digs it out, and Alonso, the lead runner, is not a fast runner, but he is held up at third by Glenn Hoffman. A double for Justin Upton. Tie score, a one-run ball game. Hoffman's going to send him. He played that very conservatively. Breaking ball. Just sort of hangs middle in, and that is the kill zone for Upton. Real good middle in hitter. And it doesn't make any difference what speed you run in there. He's going to cover it. And this one just ripped right past Duffy, who had none chance. And there's the stop sign for Glenn Hoffman. Now Norris, who has been an excellent run producer for the Padres so far this year. We've got two runners in scoring position here. Norris hitting 344 with runners in scoring position so far in 2015. He takes ball one. So this has not started well for Vogelsong in the fourth inning after being staked to a 5 nothing lead. The walk to Alonso and then the double by Upton. And these are the guys, they've been doing a lot of damage all over the National League this year. 
especially Upton and Norris in terms of RBIs. Alonso came into this game hitting 321. Norris struck out his first time. 2 0. Oh. Son wants a new ball. That one's got no strikes in it. I don't blame him. Get rid of that thing. Meanwhile, on the out of town scoreboard at Wrigley Field, they've gone to the last of the ninth inning. Cubs are batting, trailing 5 to 2 to the Dodgers. Two and one, a fastball for a strike. Two balls, one strike. The count to Derek Norris. Will Venable is on deck. And two and two now. Uh, nice two pitch sequence there with the fastball from Vogelson behind the count 2 0. He nailed down the outside part of the plate at the knees for strike one and goes right back across the plate inside with two seam movement on the fastball and evens the count. But here's right right now where he hasn't really had a great kill pitch tonight, one that's a swing and miss pitch. Norris took it three and two. Trying to curveball just too far outside to really tease Norris. So big pitch here against a dangerous hitter. Rogi still looking at two sack. Finally, Norris asks for timeout. Focus on kind of breeze through the first three innings. He only threw 28 pitches in the three, about nine per inning. But he is in some trouble here in the fourth. 3 2 pitch. And we'll try it again. That one, a foul ball. And now Susak will go out, deliver the ball to Vogue, and they'll have a chat. Well, the three ball pitch to Alonso, who let off this inning and walked, Susak suggested. Change up, curveball, slider, and Vogelson waited and waited and waited. Finally got the fastball. And the same thing happened here with the three ball count. So after this one, Susak wants to go out and talk about it. He's calling other pitches away from the fastball, and, and Vogelson wants to go to that fastball. Three and two. Now, Norris, just as Vogel started to go into a stretch, asked for timeout. Strike three call. Painted him on the outside corner with the fastball. So realizing that that curveball is really not his friend. His best chance for the strikeout is the fastball. And he two seams him and brings that movement right on the outside corner. And a nice job there to frame that in. I don't know if it went across the plate, but a good sell job from Andrew Susak to nail down the strikeout. And you can see the reaction from Norris. Well, on the pitch FX on the uh, the MLB app, if it was off the plate, it was off the plate by a, a, a less than a quarter of an inch. So, well, I, with two strikes, I mean, a hitter's got to expand. He's got to protect, especially with, when you're down five runs and you've got a runner at third base with nobody out. You know, the infield was given a run. I mean, that's what you're trying to do: put the ball in play, get that run across the board. So, a nice comeback there from. Vogelson to get the strikeout. Will Venable, he was one of the heroes last night with his two run double in the eighth inning against Bumgarner that tied the game. One strike to count. Strike two call. <laughs> Venable grounded out to second his first time. Alonso at third, Upton, Justin Upton at second. 
That's a breaking ball on the outside corner too. And I know that you can get Venable with a back foot slider. If you set it up and it's set up now they may throw a fastball away before they go to it. But I think at some point if this. That bat runs on you will see that pitch at his back foot. A breaking ball. Five to nothing Giants runners at second and third one out. And he did go fastball away fouled into the crowd. So there's the fastball that sets up the back foot slider. Last night. This was the big hit with two on as a two nothing lead. There's the second and third and this swing of the bat tied the ball game. It would push it to extra innings and it really would be a blemish on what was a spectacular night for the Madison Bumgarner. Still no balls two strikes to Will Venable. Back to bogey and he's got. Alonso hung up. Here's Duffy. Now Vogie, they've got a runner at third already, so he can just run him all the way back. And he does tag him out before he got back to third with Justin Upton standing on third. Well, they, they did stand. They, they ran that run down for so long that the man who hit the ball, Venable, ends up at second. I mean that's the job. I mean if you're the back runner, if you're winner, Will Venable, I mean it's your job to get to second base. So from Alonzo's standpoint, he's got to stay in this rundown long enough to to allow that to happen. So he's going on contact. The ball did not get past Vogelson. And the Padres really don't lose anything. They still have runners in second and third. And Middlebrook's coming up. So here's Middlebrooks, who singled his first time. Called a strike. That's that breaking ball on the outside. All in one. One to two to five to one, by the way. The put out. The pitcher to the catcher to the third baseman to the pitcher. Two strikes. Fastball following the curveball. Well, this would be quite an achievement when the Padres had runners at second and third and one of their best RBI men at the plate. Did not look good for Vogie. Now he's one strike away from getting out of it unscathed. Justin Upton at third. Will Venable at second. Look out. Very high. Tried to elevate that fastball. It's a dangerous pitch, but you say to yourself, if you're going to miss, when you try to throw the ball across the top of the letters of a guy, if you're going to miss, miss high. Mm -hmm. Exactly what he did. This will be the 24th pitch of this inning for Ryan Vogelsong. So it's been a very stressful inning. Middle Brooks asked for time, and now Vogelsong gives the side to Sue Sex. Hey, let's talk. Well, I think this is all about location. I think his best kill pitch is that fastball. It's just a matter of where they want to put it. You want to run two seam at his back foot? Do you want to cut a fastball on the outside corner? Or maybe you want to elevate again? Those are your three options with the fastball when you have a one two count. You don't want to throw it across the middle. That's the one thing you want to avoid. Two and two now. So they go away with two seam movement. It looked like that may have been even a change up. Amarista on deck. Two and two the count to Middlebrooks. And we lead off that curve. And it's full. Three and two. 
He jumped ahead of him 0 and 2. There's Amarista. Amarista's a guy always seems to do damage to the Giants. Well, when you wear shoes like that, you better do some damage. <laughs> Marista who knocked in the winning run last night. Duffy tough hot plays it cleanly. Inning over. Buster Posey stretching out to take in the wide throw. And Vogelsong gets through it. Second and third. Nobody out and they do not score. phone and get great deals at participating Greater Bay Area McDonald's. Visit mcdapp.com. Did you get that, Mike? Yes, I did. Okay. I'm good to go. The San Francisco side of the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge from Yerba Buena Island into the city and then to AT&T Park where Brandon Crawford takes ball one from Ian Kennedy. Now both pitchers just had very long stressful innings. Kennedy had a 35 pitch marathon in the third. And that's in for a called strike. And the Giants got five runs the last four on a Buster Posey grand slam. And uh, Ryan Vogelsong just had a very laborious inning 26 pitches but he got through the fourth inning. No, no runs at all. One and two the count. Crawford hit a fly ball to left center. His first. I hit it well out to the big part of the yard, though, out near the 382 sign where it was caught by Venable. Susak is on deck, and then Blanco. Two and two. We have a little bit of history happen around uh, baseball tonight. Chicago White Sox starter Chris Sell. Became the fourth pitcher since 1900 to strike out 10 plus guys in seven straight starts. Wow. Joined Nolan Ryan, Pedro Martinez, and Randy Johnson. One away. Well, Dwayne Kuyper and I will be answering your questions live during tomorrow's game on CSN Bay Area. You can log on to Facebook.com slash CSN Bay Area to submit your questions. And we'll answer them throughout the broadcast on CSN Bay Area. And remember, find us on Facebook.com slash CSN Bay Area. Twelve forty-five game time tomorrow. Susak out to the big part of the yard. Kemp still going back. He can't get it. Susak 
keeps on going. He's into third, standing up. Kim couldn't get it at the wall, and he couldn't get it on the rebound either. Well, he is locked in. And he is a confident hitter right now. Going the opposite gap. Really, I, and I hope they don't charge Kemp with an air here. This should be a triple. But he badly misjudges it. That really is a ball that could have been caught. Reaching for the wall, and I think it threw him off when he didn't find the wall. High fastball, just a good job of going with location the opposite way. And watch him cook right now. Infield comes in, the ball is up the middle, base hit. Blanco singles him in right now. Six to nothing, Giants. Two hit night for Blanco. Blanco not waiting around, too, looking for something early in the count. It's a first pitch strike and burns Kennedy. And there's still no activity in the Padre bullpen. Padre sent out two relievers to the minors today who've been worked a lot lately and brought up two others just to sort of fortify, to, to get some fresh arms to fortify that bullpen. Bogle song, one out runner at first, squares around. And Kennedy will go to first. And Solarte, the second baseman, covering. Very well done. And Vogel song's been to the plate twice and had two sacrifice bunts. He's got five for the year to lead all the Giants pitchers in that category. And he does it on the first pitch. And, and I think that's a small thing, but I do believe it feeds the momentum of an inning. Job well done. So now Pagan. So I guess they gave a, I never heard word. They, they did give him a triple. To Andrew Susak, who got this inning going. Now Pagan spins away. Pagan has struck out and walked and scored a run. By the way, I, I, I looked up Chris Sale. You mentioned he made some history tonight with the strikeouts. Yeah. It was seven straight games, ten strikeouts or more. Yeah. And he lost. <laughs> Not right. A little late in that fastball. He went. Six and two thirds innings, ten strikeouts, one walk, excellent. Six runs, eight hits allowed, five earned. They made three errors behind him. Or they made three errors in the game in Minneapolis. One and one the count. Blanco, fast runner at second. And it's two and one. Sale is uh, now six and four for the year. He's got 95 in the third innings pitch, 129 strikeouts. Left center and Upton. He, he kind of took a circuitous route to it, but he got it. The gun retired. That's all for the Giants. But another run. The triple by Susak got him started.
Sports. Christian Arroyo, this season, the San Jose Giant, 27 games hitting 300 with a 339 on base percentage. The last two games of the first half, 5 for 10, a double. And he is a former first round pick, 25th pick overall in 2013. That is our Xfinity Future Focus. Ball and one the count to Alexi Amarista with Ian Kennedy. Two up next and out on deck. Nobody up in the Padre bullpen. The Giants lead six to nothing. That bent him back and the count is one and one. Amarista hit a fly ball to right center his first time. And he chased. Wanted to. And Reese has always had a little bit of a hole right across the letters and above. He'll chase. He'll chase the high pitch. Two and two. Oh, the sun trying to go right back up there again. Back out of play. 12.45 tomorrow. The final game of this series. And Chris Heston will take them out for the Giants. And the game one starter in the World Series for Kansas City last year, James Shields, will go for the Padres. Shields, who is 7 and 1 as a pod. 12.45, game tie tomorrow. Don't forget that. Here's Buster Posey. He'll take it himself for the unassisted put out one away. Have you heard about Pence on the fence? It's a true Giants fan must have. Friday, July the 10th will be social media night presented by AT&T. There's a special event package including a ticket to see the Giants and the Phillies and then your very own Pence on the fence doll. To receive the Pence on the fence doll, you must purchase the special event ticket. SFGiants.com slash special events. Check it out. Is that is that the one depicting that spectacular catch he made? No. In the postseason last year? I think they had that bobblehead a little bit earlier in the season. Well, that was a different one. Yes. On one to Kennedy, on two to Kennedy. This is more like a little doll type thing. So I'm confusing one with the other. Yes. This one's very cool. It's got a little story. You can go on the Giants website and find out about it. On two. And that ball is slammed down the right field line. Extra base hit for Ian Kennedy. Ian Kennedy on an 0 and 2 pitch rips a double. His second hit at 18 at bats. He had been one for 17 with 10 strikeouts. Including a strikeout tonight until that one. No high fastball off the plate. I mean, he hits this like a, an everyday player. What's the top hand throw here? I mean, that's a great swing. Going with the location. I mean, that shocked a few people out there on the field. I can guarantee that. And the guy who was probably shocked the most was the guy that threw it. I mean, that wasn't even across the strike zone. So Kennedy gets the extra base hit. Kennedy's ninth career double. So he's hit a few. Let's see 289 career at bats. That's nine doubles. A triple and a homer as well. Matt Kemp. He has struck out and grounded out to third. Three infielders move over to the left side of second. Oh, he got jammed big time. And then he goes on a walkabout. Oh, you can jam like that. <laughs> That'll make you take a walkabout. Oh, 
and to the count to Kemp. Kennedy at second. One out. One and two. Solarte, the switch hitter, is on deck. And the curve way outside. Two and two now. Kemp versus Vogelsong. Kemp, before tonight, had a 343. Lifetime average against Vogel, 12 hits, 35 at bats. So they've had a lot of experience against each other. Been part of that Giants Dodger rivalry all those years. And it's a full count. Well, those are easy takes right there. That last curveball and that fastball. And those are pitches you kind of kick yourself if you're a pitcher. You want to make those pitches a little more inviting. He's got a challenge. I mean, you have to take advantage of that six nothing lead. Vogelsong working very slowly with Kennedy over at second base. One out. Three balls, two strikes to Matt Kemp. And right up the middle, playing him there was Panic. Out number two as Kennedy goes to third. It has to be demoralizing for a hitter. I mean, he does everything right, hits the ball. And if you play your defense straight away, that's a base hit in RBI. And you can see as to where Panic set up, and that ball just comes right to him. Almost like he's playing catch with him. And you really have to acknowledge what the, the Giants do when they preset their defense to get an out like that. Ron Rodas in charge of setting the infielders defensively. And he's been hot lately. So the defense was overloaded. They had the overshift, and that proved to be just right to get Kemp. Solarte has popped out to short, rounded out to second. Pops it up. And Bell. Well, the ball. A little more than a pop up. <laughs> Hit the medium deep left field. One power for Solarte. One hit, one left. Still six nothing Giants. Honda dealer. October 3rd, 2010, that's when Brian Wilson struck out Will Venable to clinch the National League West. And the Giants would go into the playoffs. Well, and they would make a little history. And that's our Honda save. A spectacular night. An amazing sunset here in San Francisco. We're 
at the corner of Third and King Streets, 24 Willie Mays Plaza, the beautiful home of the Giants, on the shores of San Francisco Bay. The Giants have a six to nothing lead. Joe Panic, who knocked in their first run of the game with a sacrifice fly back in the third inning, leads off here against Ian Kennedy. One ball and no strikes. Matt Duffy is on deck and Buster Posey do up third in the inning. Buster's grand slam capped that five run third inning rally. Jets had only two hits in that inning. As an error was charged on the the bad hop grounder hit by Andrew Susak that got the whole thing started. All of those runs ended up being scored as unearned runs. And the count is two and one. Joe Panic out of St. John's University in New York. Not that far rem removed from his college days. And the Jets. Especially all the, the guys who came out of college when they signed. They've all, all those guys have been following the College World Series, which tonight reached the final. The national championship, Virginia versus Vanderbilt in Omaha at Rosenblatt Stadium. And it's three and two now to Joe Panic. Well, Javier Lopez, who went to Virginia, paying very close attention to that. To that game. I think it's very cool now in, in baseball. They have a best of three series. And this was the final as they uh, went into this game, each one and one and one. Out of play for Panic, still three and two. But the Vanderbilt team and the Commodores won it last year. They did. But they did not repeat. As they did not. Pretty good run just just to get there. For a second straight year. But Virginia has won the College World Series. Don't tell Javier Lopez. No, no, he recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two the count to Joe Panic. And Kennedy walks him. Nice at bat. Watch live TV now with the NBC Bay Area app. See breaking news and investigations from NBC Bay Area News, plus your favorite NBC shows live and on demand. Simply download the NBC Bay Area app, select Watch Live TV Now from the menu, enter in your television account information, and you're good to go. Matt Duffy. Ball one off the outside. You, know, you mentioned earlier in the broadcast that the Padres had sent a couple arms out that were tired basically to, to replenish their bullpen. They brought in two new arms. And what's happening tonight, Pat Murphy, the skipper of the Padres, is basically telling Ian Kennedy, you've got a pitch. And then nobody has moved towards the bullpen. This could be two. Amarista steps on second and doubles up Duffy. Duffy is 0 for 2 with a walk. Buster Posey up now, and he had the big hit in the third. Now it comes on a two strike count. And just hit a high, majestic bolt. Home run number 11, Grand Slam number two this year. And ball one to Buster. Chance have hit four grand slams as a team this year. The Padres have hit four. Oakland has hit four. And no other team has hit that many. The Giants are tied for the major league lead in grand slams. Buster's got two of them with Casey McGee and Brandon Crawford, the others. Ball on a strike to Buster. And the second baseman Solarte was shaded over toward the middle and throws him out. 
Six to nothing Giants as we head to the sixth inning. The big hit is Alonso, Justin Upton, and Norris coming up. manager was named to the helm of the Friars just over a week ago and as we try to get to know the new skipper for San Diego here's a fun little fact he has a very interesting connection to the Giants hitting instructor Bam Bam Eulens. Pat Murphy managed the 2000 Dutch Olympic team of which Bam Bam was a team member. The two go way back. They had a little reunion yesterday. We were able to catch up. Now, Bam Bam said Murphy only had a short time to make an impact on that team, but he did a very good job, had a great reputation, was very energetic, and very knowledgeable about the game. Guys? All right, Davey, thanks for the, the inside info. And it's a ball and a strike to Yonder Alonso leading off the sixth inning for the Padres against Ryan Vogelsong. Bogey, 70 pitches through the first five innings. Alonso has not been retired by Vogel's song tonight. Alonso got the single on a ball misjudged by Belt, and he has walked. Each team with four hits, oddly enough. The Jacks have six runs on four hits. The Padres have no runs on four hits. And Vogel's song, who earlier this year pitched. Seven shutout innings against the Padres. Twelve shutout innings in a row going against them now. Back on May the 5th here. He went seven, allowed no runs, three hits in that game. Giants won it, six nothing. And spun him around, three and one. Justin Upton is on deck. These are the big hitters for the Padres. Three, four, five spots in the Padre batting order. Dodgers won their game at Wrigley Field, five to two over the Cubs. Joe Panic. One away. And that's what you do. I mean, that's what he couldn't do in the fourth inning when he walked Alonzo with a with a five nothing lead. And here with a six nothing lead, he gets back in, in, a, in a three one count. And he fastball right across the middle, put the pressure on the hitter, and he gets the ground out. So a good job to get that first out. So here is Justin Upton, who has flied out deep to right. Excellent play made by Blanco. And then he doubled down the left field line his last time. Over the head of Duffy for a base hit. Belt hurries it back to the infield.
Take a look at the mistake in height that was right over the plate at the belt. And Duffy gave just about all he had right there, still about three feet short. But really a nice play from Brandon Bell. I mean, good footwork. To get that ball back into the infield quickly and deny a double. Norris has struck out twice in this game. Ball one. And that curveball just has not been a great pitch for Volosan tonight. Really relied heavily on the fastball. Two types of movement. Cutter. Change up. Runner going, and it's a steal for Upton. As Susak tried to throw from his knees on that one. Well, it's 15 steals now for Upton. He has not been thrown out. But he picked a pretty good time right here. I mean, I don't think that Vogels on really paying a lot of attention to him. Very high, deliberate leg kick. And a good base runner. I mean, he looks at those things. Sees that a pitcher is concentrating more on the hitter than him. Takes advantage of it. Ball and a strike to Norris. And he has been the second leading RBI producer for the Padres back of Justin Upton. 41 runs batted in. Two and one. Giants six Padres nothing six inning these last three innings the Padres have put men in scoring position in each one of those innings a pretty good rip at that high 89 mile an hour fastball and fouled it straight back into the crowd two and two Padres had second and third and nobody out in the fourth inning with Norris up Vogel song struck him out and then ultimately got out of the inning with no run scoring. Kennedy got a one out double against him in the fifth inning, but he was stranded. Now Upton with the one out single and a steal of second. He's in scoring position. Two and two the count to Norris. Norris is now 0 for 7. In his career against Vogelsong. There's Pagan, plenty of room out in center field. Upton tags and is not going anywhere. Two down. That was a good curveball. A little more inviting to start out just on the outside corner and then just fell off the plate. And when you have a good breaking ball like that, that, that causes a, a hitter to reach. I mean, you've done a good job of your pitch. I mean, that's, that's what you're trying to do. George so Canto is heading down to the Giants bullpen. Well, we saw him. 81 pitches thrown. Working here in the sixth inning. Vanable has grounded out to second. And then, with runners at second and third and one out in the fourth inning, he hit one back to Vogelsong. And Vogelsong was able to. Catch the runner taking liberties off the third base. The Giants got him in a rundown and tagged out Alonso. So 0 for 2. Preventable tonight. Uh -huh. Went way down for that low changeup to foul it, and it's a ball and a strike. But he's always been a a tough out for Vogelsong. Came into this game hitting 385 against him in 26 career at bats. But Vogel's been able to handle him so far tonight. One and won the count. Off the outside. Giants not in the big. Complete overshift, but the shortstop Crawford is almost right up the middle. There you see how they're playing it. And 
And three and one. Jets uh, really have some action going in the bullpen. It's Javier Lopez, the lefty. George Contos, the right-hander. Getting ready in a hurry. Chris Bochy has a very rested bullpen. Three and two. And you can't always say that when you just had a game to win 11 innings the night before. Uh, games like that, a lot of times, you chew up a bullpen. And not the case. The Giants have an eight man bullpen, so they have an extra arm down there. Two down, runner at second here in the sixth. Time right, taken. Jake Peavy here tonight. Top it over to Chris Heston. And it's a walk. So Venable gets the walk, and now Dave Rigetti is dispatched to the mound to uh, conference with. Brian Vogelsong as Will Middlebrooks, right handed hitter who has some power coming up. Middlebrooks has nine home runs this year. And really not a, a, a time killer to allow the bullpen to get ready to go. Contos and, and Javier Lopez, I mean, they're, they're heated up. They're good. I think this is just a motivational speech. You know, I mean, you're a pitching coach, you come out there and you tell the guy, listen, you don't want to have anybody come into this inning. This is your inning. You want to walk off this mound and you want to, you want, this is, you, you get that last out. I mean, you can challenge a guy, get him a little pumped up. Even a veteran. Sometimes you get a little challenge like that from a pitching coach or a manager, and it's just enough to get a guy right back into the concentration that he needs to finish the inning. Middlebrooks has hit a single, and he has grounded out to third. Giants about a five run third inning. Buster Posey with a grand slam. And another run in the fourth. And this first ball swinging. Crawford. And just like that, the inning is over. Six shutout innings for Bogey. PG&E, PG&E, together, we're building a better California. From AT&T Park, the Giants with a 6-0 lead over the Padres as we move to the last half of the sixth inning. I'm John Miller with Mike Kruko, bringing you Giants baseball on NBC Bay Area and the Giants television network. Overshift on for the Padres against Brandon Belt, who has gone 0 for 2 against Kennedy. There you see how they're playing it. With the Second baseman Solarte out there in right field. 
Nobody anywhere near third base against Bell. Right there, outside corner again. Belt has grounded out to short and been called out on strikes. And he's got two quick called strikes here. One away. Kind of a three pitch see you right there. Paints him a couple times and then just throws a little two seam fastball that runs away off the strike zone, gives him a chase. Sometimes pitching looks easy. And for Belt, he looked a little frustrated as he walked away from the plate. And it, the hits have been few and far between for him lately. Ball one to Brandon Crawford. Back to uh, last week. And about three hits in his last 28 at bats. Brandon Crawford tonight has flied out to left center and struck out. And that's called a strike. Two and one. Tomorrow, 12:45, first pitch. And again, you, I know my wife said to me today. Tomorrow's at 12:45. I thought it was a night game. <laughs> it will surprise a few people, and I hope nobody gets surprised. But the time has been changed from the original scheduled 7:15, and there's a reason for it. The Padres have requested it because they're having problems with curfew getting back into San Diego. So the Giants accommodated their request. And that's all for Brandon Crawford. Kennedy strikes out the Brandons here, two down. So it's up to you and me, John. We have to make sure everybody knows that tomorrow is a day game. It is not a night game, as it says on the schedule. So if you have tickets or know somebody who's planning to come here tomorrow, make sure they know that it is a 12:45 start time. Tell them, hey, uh, Crook asked me to remind you. That's a, yes, that's good. Pass it on. I take full responsibility. Here's Andrew Susak, who reached on an error, although we thought maybe the official score could have called it a hit. And that was the start of the Giants' five run third inning, and then he hit a triple and scored a run in the fourth inning. So he hit the ball very hard twice and scored two runs officially. One hit, two at bats. Giants have been out hit. Five to four in this game. Five hits for the Padres, four for the Giants. The Giants have a six run lead. And that's a called strike. Okay. Ian Kennedy, veteran right hander, delivers. Just missing it. Kennedy started ahead of the dugout. <laughs> Takes the. The throwback for the catcher with an angry swipe of the glove. Susak's been really hot. Eight for his last 18. And you're obviously seeing Kennedy well tonight. Kennedy thought he had him right there. And maybe right there too. Jim Reynolds, the plate umpire. He's done a good job, but I mean, he's been like he always is. He's tight, but he's steady. They're consistent. Right center field. Another hit for Susak. Cut off by Kent. Susak with a double. Kennedy was barking at Reynolds. Reynolds came out from behind home plate, took his mask off. And Kennedy. Did a smart thing. He just turned his back and walked out towards second. But another fastball challenge. Great job of staying down through the swing, using the right side of the field a second time tonight. And when you're backspin in the opposite gap like this, I mean, you're locked in. And 
Nice two strike two out of bat from Andrew Susak. Keeps it going now for Gregor Blanco and Travis Ishikawa has come out on deck, not Ryan Vogel's song. Javier Lopez, the left hander. Well, the Padres are they're gonna walk Blanco intentionally anyway. Wow. With Ishikawa on deck and the left hander warming up in the bullpen. Well, I mean, Blanco's had two base hits off of Kennedy tonight, so I guess Pat Murphy just says, I'm not gonna let him pitch to him again. It is, it, it is a strange call. I mean, it's not one to see every day. Padre bullpen gets busy for the first time. Kevin Quackenbush, a right hander, just brought back up for the minors today. And I, the reason I don't like this play is because you got a guy there's a control pitcher, Kennedy. I mean, he, when he misses, he hasn't been missing much. He's got an open base. I know it's a six nothing ball game, and I know you don't want to give him any more runs, but he's more than capable of nibbling and not letting uh, the hitter have a, a real easy location pitch to hit. Travis Ishikawa back in town and back with the Giants really for the first time since last October and he gets a standing ovation Ishikawa had the Bobby Thompson moment he hit the pennant winning home run in game five of the league championship series here it was And on that swing of the bat, the Giants had won the pennant second time in the long history of the Giants that they had won the pennant of the National League on a game ending home run the other time. One of the most famous home runs in the history of the game, Bobby Thompson's shot heard around the world in 1951. A ball of the strike to Ishikawa. By the way, great call on that. I'm just like uh, Ishikawa. I have no memory of it. <laughs> it was a good one. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I get chills. Other than at some point saying, maybe I should say that the Giants just won the pennant. Well, you did. They said they won the game. They won the pennant. It was a beautiful game. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. One ball, two strikes to Ishikawa. So only you and Russ Hodges have had that opportunity to do that. Well, it was a, a great moment. And the Ishikawa goes down. But a moment that will live forever in the minds of Giants fans everywhere. Brought to you by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Share the wonder, share the love at MontereyBayAquarium.org 
slash love. Back inside AT&T Park where the Giants hold a six to nothing lead as we head to the seventh inning. And the pitching change for the Giants, Javier Lopez, whose alma mater won the College World Series tonight. Javier takes over here in the seventh inning with the left-handed batting Amarista coming up. And the Giants have more bullpen activity as Clint Barmas comes out in the on-deck circle. Melvin Upton Jr. had been out there just a moment ago, but in fact, this, this is already Melvin Upton at the plate now to bat for Amarista. I beg your pardon. I was wondering where he went from the on-deck circle. He went to home plate. And this ball one off the outside. Well, Pat Murphy, the skipper of the Padres, I mean, he had an extra move with five extra players on the bench. Bruce Bochy only has four. So down six nothing here. I think that Pat Murphy feels like this is his shot. So we're we're just really <laughs> stunned by the versatility that he has on his roster. He's got five extra guys. What? Five on the bench. <laughs> well, the Giants with 13 man pitching staff. I mean, it, it, it's going to take you uh, one guy off the bench, leave you with four four moves. And one and two, the count to Upton. Used to be called B.J. Upton. And uh, we thought we heard uh, Buddy Black when he was still managing the Padres on a, a national radio show said that they all called him B.J. But that was just for the media. That it was changed back to Melvin. Upton used to be with the Tampa Bay Rays. And he was a very good player. He hit well enough, hit some power, was excellent center fielder, stole bases. And it's three and two. And then he became a free agent. Atlanta gave him a lot of money. And everything just disappeared from his offensive game. It's like he just forgot how to hit. There's Duffy. And Melvin Upton is retired. Well, the Rockies are coming to San Francisco this weekend. That's right, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Friday night will be a, a fireworks night presented by Snapple. It will kick off the weekend. Saturday the 27th, the Skyline Sox giveaway presented by Johnsonville. And on Sunday the 28th, the first 20,000 fans will receive a Hello Kitty bobblehead. And you can get your tickets at sfgiants.com slash tickets. Hello, Kitty. <laughs> That's a good one. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Kitty. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy right there. I'm working on it. That, 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 that gets me every time. Clint Barmas. Right back to Javier Lopez. Buster Posey gets the foot out. And it just illustrates the beauty of Javier Lopez. I mean, you have a what is a perceived to be a, a, a left-handed specialist, but yet he can get right-handers out, and he really proved that this year in spring training. Who's coaching? Basically challenged him. Said, "I need you to do more," and, and he's responded well with a changeup, a two-seam fastball, pitches that run away from righties, and he's just been chewing them up. Matt Kemp now. Lefties against Lopez have had two hits and 38 at bats, an 053 average. Right handers now five for 29, hitting 170. And you know, when, when a manager, I mean, it just has to be a verbal challenge, but he'll say, You're going to pitch an inning, and you look at the inning, and there's three right handers coming up, and that's what he did with them in spring training. Strike two for Javier Lopez. I mean, he took the challenge. Really, with the additional looks that he could give a hitter now, I mean, he's a completely different guy than he has been this last several years.
Matt Kemp has struck out and twice grounded out. 0 for 3. Kemp last night struck out three straight times. 0 for 3 in that game. So 0 for 6 in the series. Hitting leadoff tonight for the first time in five years. Matt Duffy. Three ground ball outs in a row, all hit by right handed hitters against Javier Lopez. And we'll be back with you on NBC Bay Area and the Giants Television Network on Saturday. It, I'm pretty sure it's not June the 11th. It must be Saturday, July the 11th at 7 o'clock for the Giants and the Phillies from right here at AT&T Park. Just before the All-Star break. The big crowd, 41,744 here at 24 Willie Mays Plaza tonight six to nothing the Giants are leading the Padres bring in the new pitcher Marcus Mateo brought up from uh, El Paso their triple-a ball club this year the is it the El Paso Chihuahuas I think it is see his numbers down there tough to hit a lot of strikeouts yeah, he's got velocity that's that's mid to high 90s low three quarter kind of a slinging delivery he's not a he's kind of a spooky at bat Top of the order for the Giants, starting with Pagan, who has struck out, walked, and scored, and flied out to left center. And it's 0 1, 94 miles an hour. This Clint Barmas, who stays in to play shortstop after pinch hitting for Kennedy. So Mateo will be slotted in the eighth position in the batting order. And back out of play. 0 2 to Pagan. Dodgers won their game earlier. 5 to 2 in Chicago. Dodgers play in Chicago again tomorrow. Strike three call. That's all for Pagan. Came back door with that little slider. Mateo has some big experience with the Cubs last couple of years. Joe Panic. Panic has grounded out to second. Hit a sacrifice fly. That plated the first run of the night for the Giants in the third inning. That was a little bit before Buster's grand slam. And he walked his last time. He was 0 for 1 officially. Oop, that was called a ball. Padres starter Ian Kennedy went six innings. Gave up five hits, six runs, but only one earned run. 
back out of play. Quality start. They go by just earned runs for that statistic. Quality starts. I like when you, you watch a, a highlight show and they say, and he only gave up one earned run. Well, what about the five hundred? <laughs> Did he give those up? Hey, it's a statistic. It can be argued. On the inside, ball three. Matt Duffy is on deck. Mateo. They uh, brought him up and Kevin Quackenbush from the minors, and they sent to Dale Thayer and Nick Vincent out. Vincent, who last night threw 33 pitches in an inning and two thirds of work, back to the screen. And Thayer had been pretty busy lately as well, although he warmed up last night. He never got into the game. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you have a, five, a seven man bullpen. And, uh, you carry the extra man on the bench, five guys on the bench. And at times, your bullpen's going to get taxed, and the only way you can relieve those seven is if you go down and bring somebody out of the nine Barmas, barehanded pickup, too late. And that is a hit for Joe Panic, his first of the night. Great effort there by Clint Barmas. Two seed fastball at the belt, up and away, just hits the top of the ball. And once it got past Mateo, it was going to be a real tough play for anybody on the left side of the infield. Barmas with the bare hand, probably been better off taking a bite. Really, he had no shot at throwing out Joe Panic by that time. Here is Duffy. Strike one. Duffy has lined out to right, walked and scored a run, and grounded into a double play. On two. Bang, bang. Slider, slider. Giants have action going in their bullpen. The right hander warming up. And uh, up again in the Giants bullpen. He was up earlier with Javier Lopez. George Cantos getting ready. Likely coming up in the eighth. We'll see. And that's all for Matt Duffy. Three sliders in a row. That last one kind of backed up. Very similar to the call strike three on Angel Pagan. Set the target away. This thing kind of backs up on the inside corner. And Jim Reynolds, plate umpire, says, see ya. So Buster Posey, only one hit for Buster. It knocked in four runs. Barmas, backhanded flip. Solarte gets the put out on Panic. Nice play there by Barmas. Buster and the Giants are down. One hit, one left. On to the eighth inning. Six to nothing. Giants. Conklin's coming in.
Golden State Warriors captured an NBA title 40 years in the waiting, but the entire season they captured our hearts. And a couple of Warriors were here yesterday, courtesy of the Giants. You're looking at Festus Azili throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Yeah, he probably should stick to basketball, but it was a strike nonetheless. And gentlemen, he is officially the tallest person I've ever seen in the Giants dugout at 6'11". Brandy Johnson was a measly 6'10". Azili wins, guys. All right, Azili is the new record holder in that category. It's official, thanks to Amy G. Here's George Cantos in the eighth inning, on in relief of Javier Lopez, who retired three straight Padres when he was in there in the seventh inning. Giants also has some other changes as Solarte leads off and takes a called strike. That's a curveball. That's a pitch that he started throwing about a month ago. And he was so proud of it. He goes, hey, did you see the curveball I threw? Did you see the curveball I threw? Did you see the curveball I threw? <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. I, yes. I, I, yeah. I... And that seemed to surprise Crawford. Still got him. I didn't think after the bobble they'd have a chance. Yeah. Uh, probably going to look at it. And watch how quickly he goes down with the bare hand and still gets a throw off. And I do believe he got him. And this is great, great quickness of hands, great quickness of feet. And we see it every day from Crawford. And even on a bobble, he can be spectacular. And I think he got deep there by uh, Matt Duffy. And it's on one. Giants now have Blanco has moved from right field to left field. And Justin Maxwell has gone into the game to play right field. Brandon Bell, who just got that put out at first base, moving from left field over to first with Buster Posey now out of the game. Maxwell in the ninth spot of the order. And uh, Buster Posey, who made the final out in the Giants' seventh inning. That is the spot, the cleanup spot, where Contos will be slotted. But the thing about Contos, when he first got into professional baseball, I mean, he was a starting pitcher. So he had the curveball, but he kind of just let it fall off the side of the road. And, and this year he's brought it back. And he's throwing the most confidence we've ever seen him throw. He's pitching beautifully this year. That was a great first half. On two. He's in change ups, sliders, cutters, two types of fastballs. And he really doesn't believe that anybody can hit him. I mean, and that's that's the kind of confidence you want coming out of your pen. Yonder Alonso has singled, walked, and grounded out. He's got a 323 batting average for the year. Kevin Quackenbush a right hander warming up in the Padres bullpen. And it's one and two as he crowded Alonso with that one. Here's Quackenbush with the Bullpen coach Willie Blair, himself a former big league pitcher. Two and two. The Jacks have Belt, Crawford, and Susack as their due ups in the last half of the eighth inning. So I guess that's the stuff that Willie Blair is going over. Krakenbush uh, giving him the, the lowdown and the scouting reports and whatnot of those guys. That's exactly what he's doing. And that's the strikeout for Contos. Now that's the hard slider that has always been his, his kill pitch. And uh, now he saves it. He doesn't show it early in it in an at bat. He, he saves it for uh, you can see the eye of the slider, the spin of the slider. And that thing just explodes straight down. And it's a strikeout pitch to both righties and lefties. And that's what makes it special. Two down. Justin Upton, the cleanup hitter, who has slid out deep to right, doubled and singled. He's two for three. And the one time the Giants retired him, it was an excellent play by Gregor Blanco. And it's 0 1. Justin Upton has never had a hit against Contos. And that tells you something about the stuff that Contos has. Upton is 0 for 9 against him. 
Justin Upton, that is. Strike two. This was the first at bat for Justin Upton. Now, this is really one of the more spectacular plays of the game. Now, this is with one on, two outs, and it ended the inning for Ryan Bogusong. I mean, that's a momentum play right there. And Bogusong took it and used it the rest of his night. Six shutout innings. Yeah, it, it really is remarkable what a play like that defensively could do for a pitcher. It just makes you feel like you're invincible. And, and whatever gets hit, somebody's going to catch it. And that was a great play because of the sunshine that was in the, the face of Blanco, the carry that the ball had. He started in the shadows and went out and suddenly was in the the sunshine and looking back right into the, the teeth of the sun. And he hasn't played a lot of right field this year. It's been basically left field center field for the most part. I think when you when you look back at the time that Blanco has been with the Giants. His outfield play. And it's not that easy to quantify it. I think the Giants have ways to. You know, statistical. People can. Maybe quantify it. But. He has just been. So important to the ball club. And let's face it, last year they won the World Series. They won October, and he was the everyday center fielder. And in 2012, they did the same thing, and he was the everyday left fielder. And it was because of injury both both years. But he is a guy who who catches the ball. He's just an outstanding outfielder. Prevents a lot of runs. And now Justin Upton is 0 for 10. In his career against Cactus, a strong inning for George. Belt and Crawford and Sousa coming up. New pitcher in there for the Padres, Kevin Quackenbush, who, just as with the seventh inning pitcher, Marcus Mateo, was just brought back up from the minor leagues for this game. One and one on the year with a 3 1 0 ERA, and that's all at the big league level. 18 strikeouts and 20 to third. He's got a fastball that he can sink and cut, slider, change up. Problem that Quackenbush has had this year is getting left handers out, and that has been the one Achilles heel. But he has excellent stuff, and he can definitely give you a, an assortment of different movements. Mateo will face Brandon Belt. And uh, and he'll be tested in regards to. Getting left handed hitters out here the Giants first two hitters do up are both left handed. Belt and Crawford. They've got the overshift on three infielders to the right. And it's strike one to Brandon Belt. You can see uh, the stitching on his glove. His name. Black. <laughs> of 
curves in for a ball. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike to Brandon Bell. 0 for 3 in the game. He takes the ball too low. Because we all were very saddened on Monday to learn of the, the death of the former Giant, Daryl Hamilton. And I know last night on the Comcast telecast, you guys paid tribute to the former Giant. And I think all around baseball, he was such a popular figure. Everybody in mourning for the loss of Daryl Hamilton. That was hit fairly well by Bell, but caught by Justin Upton, and there is one away. But it brought back a memory of Daryl Hamilton as the first batter in the first interleague game ever played. It was in Texas in 1997, and he got a base hit. And uh, Will Clark was the first baseman for the Texas Rangers, and uh, Daryl Hamilton got the first base, and all of a sudden they're taking the ball out of play. And Sending it over to the Giants dugout and, and Hamilton said what's up? What are they, what's going on? He says well, it's the first hit Will Clark told him first hit in interleague play It's that ball's probably going to the Hall of Fame and uh, Hamilton was like oh cool <laughs> He said after the game they asked him for his uniform and uh, his bat and that went to the Hall of Fame as well And he he said it was just the whole thing is so cool for him to be the first and Daryl Hamilton and that's the way I think we all remember him because he was always fun and always lively and, and he was great in the clubhouse a very popular figure in that clubhouse well, he really was I mean, it, it's just such a jolt uh, unexpectedly and tragically and you know, we will miss him we saw him recently and he's working uh, in baseball and broadcasting and just you know, another career doing it very well But he played the game beautifully with dignity and it just saddens all of us that, uh, that he's gone. Daryl Hamilton and he came to the Giants that year and a lot of players came to the Giants that year. Brian Sabin it was his first year as the, the man in charge the general manager. And he reworked that team to get more depth more talent and uh, Daryl Hamilton was part of that. J.T. Snow, Jose Vizcaino. There, was a, there were a long list of Jeff Kent. And the Giants came out of nowhere and won the division that year, which nobody predicted. Nobody. Justin Upton right by the Giants' bullpen. And Crawford is retired. So Crockenbush has gotten two lefties in succession. It's, we noticed down there in the bullpen. Gene Machi is warming up. So he may be the guy for the ninth inning as Andrew Susak comes up. There's Machi. On one, the count to Susak. Amazing what has happened, and we talk about him being hot now. You see him stepping into this bat hit 282, and it wasn't that long ago he was under 200. And really, you know, the first time you ever go through it as a big leaguer, you don't know if you're ever going to come out of it. And a few hits here, a few hits there, all of a sudden he gets hot. And a whole different look as he gets in that batter's box now. And really, he'll be a better hitter for this the rest of his career having gone through his, his first slump and he struck him out so a strong inning for Krakenbush first time that Susak has been retired tonight Machi for the ninth six nothing Giants
It's net authentic Bay Area sports. And it's the ninth inning. The Giants ahead six to nothing. The Dodgers won earlier at Wrigley Field five to two. The Giants began the day a game out of first in the West. And here is uh, Gene Machi just back from his minor league rehab assignment after going on the disabled list. So a nice opportunity in a game to come back in and get back on the horse. Ahead 6 nothing. Derek Norris leads off against him. Has struck out twice and flied out once. In the game. Vogelsong went the first six. No runs. Five hits allowed. Over to right center. Pagan. So one pitch, one out. That's how you like to start an inning. Giants had the five-run third inning. They got one run home on the sacrifice fly by Joe Panic, but then it became a big inning. And Buster Posey planted a grand slam, his second in the last five games, into the left center field seats. Buster had hit, Buster had hit two grand slams in his career, and now he's hit two in the last five games. Of course, you have to you have to come up with the bases loaded to, to do that. You're not always loaded when you come up, even when you hit cleanup. Of course, Buster also had a grand slam in the division series in the clinching game in Cincinnati against Matt Latos. That does not count as part of his regular season statistical line. 2 0 the count to Will Venable, who has twice grounded out, once walked. Three infielders to the right of second for him. The only man on the left side gets this grounder. Duffy throws him out. Duffy a shortstop for the one play. Well, that's what he was in the minor leagues, a shortstop. Although right now he thinks of himself as a third baseman. Chris Spire had two grand slams in a five game span back in 87. And then Buster tonight, the last two times in Giants history that it's happened. Grand slams that close together. The Giants are tied for the major league lead as a team in grand slams with four as Brett Wallace pinch hits for Middlebrooks here. It's a pretty good football right there. Strike two. And the fourth ball just got a piece of that one. Yeah, that was 88 mile an hour football. Well, he says if it's 88, that's his splitter. If it's 84, that's his fork ball. Well, that was his splitter. I mean, is that a different grip? Well, it is. One you hold deeper between your fingers, the other one you hold out more towards your fingertips, the split finger fastball. And the fork ball doesn't have as much spin. He struck him out <laughs> with another one. That was nasty. And that's very nice to see him back looking that sharp. Indeed. He's been an important man out of that Giants bullpen for a couple of years. For the Giants.